Good morning, traders, and welcome to the Bookmap Live Trading Webinar. This is Bruce at Bookmap, uh, and uh, this is uh, we do this uh, live analysis, forward-looking analysis, three days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Friday, uh, and then we have live trading Wednesday and Thursday. So let me explain a little bit for those that are new in here. We've had a lot of new traders come in recently, uh, so uh, and I see a lot of uh, uh, familiar faces in here as well. Well, so welcome. Uh, good morning, Doug. Good morning, Alan. Um, Alan, I hope I hope you're grabbing those moves. Alan's been uh, attending the uh, uh, basics webinar, the one that uh, precedes this one, uh, at 9:30 a.m. And we always see some, or typically see some, really good moves in there. Good morning, James. Um, and uh, and some very nice momentum moves uh, up into areas of high liquidity. Uh, and um, uh, yeah, there's. Uh, <laughs> good morning, Mark. Um, and uh, just I, I think there's just such uh, easy reads, uh, a little bit trickier today, but some easy reads. We'll go through it in a second. Uh, what I'm getting at here, let me just uh, take a step back. This is our education. Um, it's the advanced education with your Global Plus subscription. And we have an educational course. We have these live analysis webinars. It's forward looking, not hindsight. Uh, and the idea is you can apply what you learn from the course. Uh, and uh, we'll go through some you know, setups and trade management, et cetera. But Bookmap is a platform. We're not a setup. We're, you know, we're not a specific way of managing a trade. That's why we we have these live analysis webinars, so you can apply and learn order flow. And then we have the live trading, so you can apply all of the other elements uh, uh, from different traders like uh, J Trader and Scott Polsini uh, on Wednesdays and Thursdays. All right, so that'll complete the education for you. So let's go through some risk disclosures and get into it here. A general disclosure, all book map limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. The risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, so let's jump in here and see what's going on. Uh, here was the move earlier. Um, uh, once we had this kind of breakout here is looking for, uh, well, we were looking for it actually even even previously from the previous previous webinar um, was that, well, we see the initial uh, move to the upside, right, into high liquidity here, here, and then uh, up in here just in front of this uh, uh, 575 area. Uh, and then we sell off really quickly. But look at the structure, okay? The market structure here created by best bid and offer uh, is still bullish. And let me be um, for new, new, newer traders in here. This is what we mean by market structure. Okay, we can we can just uh, start to outline it here. Here's structure. Uh, we have a few different structures here. Here's one here. There's one here, and there's actually one here. Um, however, you know, in in general, it's just one bigger structure. You know, more or less. Uh, we see a breakout. Okay, we see a, a bounce off of this kind of structure here, uh, and, it, and it broke out again. Okay, and we have a huge sell-off, but it did not even come down below the swing low here. This is bullish. Okay, and then we see buyers are going to come in. We're going to probably see buyers around this area here. Uh, we certainly saw a lot of buyers. I think it was either here or here. Um, and they, they really picked up in here. That's when we're looking for the breakout. So even from this area here, we're still bullish here until we see sellers below that area, right? And then we're looking for the breakout. Uh, and then you can start to even uh, get you know, into structure again uh, on the smaller time frames. Okay? You can see all sorts of things in here, a little, little structure in here, but uh, one here, another one here, another one here, okay? Back and forth, breakout, back and forth, breakout. All right, so uh, that's understanding market structure that is created by best bid and offer going back and forth. All right, so now what we're looking at here is starting to understand the context of volume and the limit buy and sell orders within the market structure. So uh, the volume here, we put the volume dots on uh, and we're looking for buyers to break out from these areas here. And we certainly get it here and we get nice little pullbacks to where it broke out from and it continued. And we got a pullback yet again here 
This time the pullback was deeper, quite a bit deeper. Uh, and, it, and it came to a little point of control of this range in here. And you can see it right here, right? Look how we bounced off of the point of control. And we continued higher. And once we start to see that buying coming back in, we're looking for it to break. This is looking great that it was going to break out from here. And it just did. Okay, Not only here, but also again here. Now, let's look at the way it broke out here. Okay. Uh, not, not so great. I mean, not as great as these areas. It's still bullish. You know, don't get me wrong. Uh, but uh, the breakout is, the volume in here is not as high as in here. This is why I was saying earlier, these moves are easier to read because we know the order flow within the moves. Here is more, it starts to get more complex. It's always right around this time uh, in the webinars. Uh, it starts to get more complex. Right. And um, that's just how it is. Like uh, this is after the first, like, uh, you know, 40 minutes uh, of, uh, of trading. Uh, so we're going to look at lots of other things. Yesterday, we looked at a ton of stuff in the webinar. In fact, I want to cover that. Um, let me put the heat map back on here. Okay. To find out where those buyers and sellers are. Um, I, I want to cover this here because uh, yesterday I, I've been, you know, <laughs> over the years, it's been made a fool of. Uh, by reading the order flow yesterday, remember if you guys were present, uh, we talked about it. Uh, the moves down into high liquidity all the way down. Okay, and we're still looking for the move to go lower yesterday. Uh, and we we really saw some nice, um, uh, we're, we're looking for a reversal kind of early on, and we caught one, uh, but it failed, it didn't follow through. Okay, but we would we would have we we talked about the trade management and 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 taking profits along the way, uh, and then that failed, and then we started to look at other markets and other confluences, uh, like correlated markets. Uh, once we started to look at those, we're looking for the move lower, uh, and we got those nice moves lower. Uh, we didn't really get any like clean setups uh, yesterday. There might have been a couple earlier on. Uh, but they were, they were more like just drops in the market. Uh, it wasn't like a clean setup of like, uh, uh, you know, we're going to sell here uh, and, um, uh, you know, due to the, the imbalance in the order book and the volume and, and maybe a pullback or, or something. Uh, it didn't really quite do that. It was more like, okay, we think it's going to go down here. We're not getting a clean setup, but we're looking for the order flow to go this direction. Uh, and, and I mentioned it as a kind of leap of faith a few times. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, it, that's fine as long as you guys understand, you know, and, and know uh, what the order flow phenomena is uh, and become um, rather intimate with it. Uh, then you can apply that uh, within a trading strategy and trade management strategy uh, to, to understand it. All right. So, uh, you, you know. Um, I wanted to mention this because uh, I failed, to, I mentioned the leap of faith and we didn't get a clean setup yesterday several times. Uh, however, uh, I, I didn't mention though, that due to the correlations, we have those added uh, confluences. Uh, so maybe you don't need a, a beautiful order flow setup uh, if you have these confluences in there. That's something to consider and look into. All right, because these confluences are very, very powerful or co correlated markets. Uh, and uh, that's enough to uh, justify, no no question about it, that's enough to justify a, a trading decision, All right? And, and you would have you know, done very nicely, I think, uh, uh, yesterday. Um, all right, so now let's take a look at the higher time frame in here. I wanna go through that, uh, looking at the daily here. This is what we're talking about. This candle yesterday, and this big move down and, and um, you know, looking at when it might reach kind of an ADR or, you know, an average daily range um, or, you know, range here that uh, is kind of similar to these other sell moves. And due to, and I, I'm sorry, we'd have to go back and look at the webinar, but like I'm, I am sure that, that uh, maybe I can find it. I, I don't know, maybe you guys remember the, the line I drew up where they started selling. I'm, I'm sorry where they started buying with limit buy orders, look for a move, a strong move here. They back up into these levels up here. And we're already seeing a strong move. And I'm looking for it to continue. 
there's no reason to think any differently yet. Um, we know we know that they were buying all the way down. Is there still a ton of selling in here? No, not today. So we're looking for it to move up into these other areas. So for example, here, kind of where it broke from this kind of range here, uh, looking for, this is around 669. Okay, so let's go with 700, you know, up in this area here. Heck, we could move all the way back up into these levels here. Look for your volume profiles, look for high volume nodes, probably somewhere around here, 731, maybe 750, um, et cetera. We just know that there was a lot of buying on the way down here, and if there's not enough selling in here, this can float up easily, very, very easily, right? That's what we're looking for here today uh, in the order flow. This is higher time frame analysis. Not, don't worry about the candlestick charts here. Uh, what I mean by higher time frame analysis is in the order flow, okay? Because we had yesterday's activity and we're understanding that in context to today's activity and order flow. Oh, excellent, uh, Sviatoslav. So uh, I said uh, it was around the 14,550, 560 area. Really? That's where it began? Uh, they, that's where they, they, the sellers hit into and they started, the limit buy orders started around that area because we're way above, well, it was a major level. Okay, yeah, and we're above that already, right? So yeah, there there you go. There's our move. Um, in fact, it makes really good sense. Uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, Sviatoslav. Uh, look at it right here, and look at the sellers here. This is this is hot, that this is exactly that level that we outlined. Uh, according to Sviatoslav, I, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't mean to put you into question. Uh, I, I just don't have the data in front of me or the information in front of me. Um, but you know, we kind of marked it up, right? And you, you even see two levels of of uh, liquidity in here, and it filled. Okay, and it sold off immediately, but we got above it here. That What that means here is what we covered yesterday. If, if that's where they started to um, uh, buy, think about it. All of those guys are in profit, all of them. E every single one that, that bought on the way down are in profit now. And there's no reason for them to get out. So we could float all the way back up into these 700 levels, no problem. Okay. Now, do we find a lot of selling yet? No. Do we see a lot of selling on the offer? Yeah, I mean, they're getting filled in these little areas here. It's likely them peeling out of some of their positions. Um, uh, but we're still seeing more buying pressure here so far. All right, this is getting a little interesting here now. Like, okay, higher time frame, we're still bullish, right? For today. Um, uh, but uh, we just made a lower high here uh, and a lower low, uh, kind of equal low here. So it, we're we're watching this here. We might get a, a pretty steep pullback here, maybe back to 600 level here, uh, or maybe you know 610 to begin with here, somewhere around here. All right, so look for we'll look for some liquidity in those levels. We see 590 starting to come in here, All right? And again, like this is going to be a, like on a higher time frame. You know, we've been covering these pivot levels uh, for a long, long time. These are pivot levels here from yesterday on the higher time frame. Okay, and we're above it. So we might get a retest all the way back down here and bounce off of these levels here as well. So we'll look for it. Now we're going to read the order flow on a smaller time frame though and look for some direction here. Okay, so we just traded into and we did make a higher high here or yeah, slightly higher high it looks like. Okay, and some good buying. Uh so uh yeah, let's uh we're still bullish here. Uh there's no reason yet to be bearish. Okay? So looking for this to continue to float up. All right, here we go. Let's see. Let's see if we get some sellers uh, to, to trade back down into those levels we just talked about. Okay, but we're still looking for this to float up. Okay, so six, six oh five, maybe six hundred.
that point of control is down here, or high volume node is down here, uh, just, just where they broke out from here. Uh, yeah, Mark, that's that's what we were talking about yesterday, a, a confluence of, of the correlated markets. So we let's, here, let's just go through it for, for example right now. Uh, let's take a look at the ES. Well, the ES is looking even more bullish than the NQ, okay? So we're, we're still bullish here. Uh, what about the uh, same thing here with the Russell? So we're still here bullish uh, NQ, okay? Looking for the move up into this liquidity up here. Uh, above just above uh, 635, 636 or so. All right, so let's see it. Let's see it, buyers. Let's see a move through this area back up into the swing high and then through it up into 636, it looks like. Here come the bulls, nice buy uh, dot there, green dot. And let's see the follow through. Yeah, we might get a quick, we might, it might get a little bit of a range bound here back to 610 liquidity here, um, but uh, still looking for the move higher. Uh, let's take a look over at um, the, the, we looked at some correlated markets. Let's look, look also at the queues. Okay. So we're going to look at a very highly correlated market here, uh, looking for this 359 area up here. That's way up here. Yeah, looking for it. You know, look, there's no reason to get out of this yet. Buyers are coming in. Buyers are coming in on the NASDAQ E-mini, looking for the move higher. Okay, higher liquidity coming in down below here. I, I imagine these guys are going to pull, but let's uh, let's see here. They were in here earlier. Uh, now they're in here again and a little bit higher, but... Uh, let's see let's see what the bid looks like and we should get these green dots and and it should float right up into these guys up here uh and i'll explain what i mean by floating up into these areas here okay, but i'm also looking for the bid to light up here a little bit more yeah here we go all right let's see the move here we should get it 630 632 635 there we go. Now, did they pull? Yeah, they did. See how they kind of pulled here? Not all of it, but most of it pulled. Okay. At the last second. All right. Now, we're going to get these kind of shakeout moves in here. Uh, if, if our scenario here is a higher time frame. Uh, and then we're going to go through some details on that scenario only right now, for just right now. Okay, we're going to see if we get a shift and a change uh, in the order flow. That, uh, but we're going to stick with it because it's still in play here uh, from yesterday. So we're going to get these kinds of shakeout moves just like this here after these breakouts. Okay, so you know, don't be surprised by this. Uh, and um, uh, you know, here, here comes one of them right now. So looking for it back down into maybe uh, i don't think we're going to retrace back down to this uh probably probably this is about it right here and uh, looking for buyers to come try to come back in here 
Okay, interesting. Went down below this swing here. All right, now looking for buyers to trade into and through 615, back up to 620, uh, and then back up into uh, our 636. See if we can get it here. Look at the bid starting to light up, 600, 602, 605. We might, we might get one more move back down. I, I mean, as it is right now on this move, yeah, I'd be looking for actually the move lower here into this liquidity first. So I, I thought we would probably get to about here and then not not trade to this swing here uh, at all, uh, just about here uh, and then and then move back up. Okay, so they traded into 615. Now they're still here at 605. And now buyers can take this float float this back up higher. Now what do I mean by float back up? is this due to yesterday and you'll see this on fridays on on big moves on fridays uh or thursdays um after a big move to the downside and then it reverses and then just continues to grind all day long the opposite direction so we saw this last friday in fact and we called it out uh and um uh this is what i mean this is this it is doing it now Okay, so here's our move back up into these higher areas. Okay, and I'm looking for the breakout as well into 635 and through it. Okay, there's 635. Now I'm still looking for it to go through. Here's what I mean. The larger players, they don't even have to reload on the bid. They're already positioned from yesterday. Okay, we saw it. So, you know, understanding the liquidity on the higher time frame is giving us a lot of insight here. Okay, we're, we're covering uh, something a little different today, talking about, you know, these higher time frame moves. I, I, I don't have yesterday's liquidity to, to, to take a look at it. Um, yeah, maybe maybe I, I, I can, I can do it. Um, let's uh, actually uh, add, I think, quite a bit here. Now this is um, I'm adding here um, some uh, backfill data is not as accurate and it certainly does not have market by order data uh, within it. Okay, so we're going to take a look and see if we can look at yesterday's uh, action. So we're going to wait wait for it to to download here. But anyway, uh, a lot of times I'm actually kind of surprised to see them on the bid in some of these areas here. Because the the way the order flow works typically um, on uh, these kinds of days when we're looking for it just to continue to grind higher is there's no activity on the bid, very little. Uh, it's usually pretty dark over here, very very little liquidity, and uh, it just keeps on floating up because and and are there a lot of buyers? There's just not a lot of sellers, uh, and. Uh, Everyone is positioned already long previously from yesterday, so it's easier for it to just a, a little bit of buying can move that market and let it grind higher for the rest of the day, okay? Until they find some real sellers, and those kinds of moves can be tricky um, to to um, to trade. Uh, that's why understanding that the the much higher time frame, this is where you get the benefit. So for example, you know, this is what happens. It floats up into this high liquidity at 635 or 636. And then it just didn't have enough, you know, enough buying here to keep floating up higher yet. But it traded into these guys. So we're still looking for now, and you'll find these quick jabs lower, just kind of like this here. Um, yeah, like this one here uh, to the downside, right? Uh, and um, 
you know, and, and this is some selling here. And, and, and uh, well, we don't see many stops either. Uh, it's kind of, that's kind of curious, but uh, uh, anyway, um, yeah, it, so it's, it's able to move quickly down here it, and then it just kind of gets right back into the groove here and, and goes with the trend. Okay, and again, looking for a little bit of a bump here, breakout here, but this to grind higher. I'm not looking for it to go shooting right back up here. To 650. Okay, now what we talked about, we talked about 700. Um, and there's liquidity up here. So it's actually a little bit above 700. So anyway, any questions on this kind of grind higher and 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 price being able to float back up because just a little bit of buying is able to move this market uh, higher uh, because the buyers are already they're still in it right it's when this and when those buyers need to start selling heavy uh, that's when we'll see this reverse and let me know if this makes sense here this is uh, we usually don't cover this kind of material in here because we're talking we're looking at all sorts of um uh smaller time frame order flow events that will extrapolate into you know uh, a, a a a higher time frame move but um or all sorts of moves uh, trying to go through as many events as possible here we're going on th only through really one event uh, and it's a continuation from yesterday not a continuation move. It was uh, an order flow event, multiple order flow events from yesterday and then looking for the move back up. Okay, and and we can even take a look here. Let's see if I got my data in here. Okay, so here, here we go. Here's our big move yesterday, right? We can float all the way back up to here. All the way back up to here no no problem here and, and this one here maybe 700 is a little too lofty of an idea um but uh i'd be looking for it to trade back up in here where the sellers came in here and in here hey we might even be able to break out back up into here and that that's uh this is where the sellers came in so that's what we're looking for. And then let's take a look here. Now, I won't be able to see as much detail in the order flow here uh, from yesterday, but just the big events. Filled in here. Okay, this is another one to take a look at. I think we're already through it, right? Right here, right here. And then, uh, uh, Sviatoslav was uh, mentioning the kind of 550, 560 area. Yeah, absolutely. And, and also a little bit below it, five, 525 in here. Yeah, this is a big one. This is a big event right here. Okay, also here, huge event, 500, no, no question. Look at all of that. I mean, they're on the bid. They're getting filled. They're getting filled. Getting filled, getting filled down in here. See now we we avoided this one did not they did not get filled in here. I think we did later. No, ne never it never. Oh yeah, this is this was kind of interesting. Um, uh, and it kind of uh, hark harkens back to uh, uh, Doug's um, QQQs uh, and um, uh, trading into these levels. we it was down on the bid. I I forget what the the price was. Um. Heck, maybe I can get it here as well. And it never traded to it. I mean, it was like a magnet to it, but it never went into it. And we found buyers starting to come in. Uh, Mark, what do I mean here at, when I'm um, assessing that is more buying than selling? Um, Yeah, one one type of bubble over another. Um, well, 
basically, we haven't found heavy heavy selling. So we're going with, um, yeah, I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't even look at CVD. Um, I mean, CVD is gonna be climbing all day long. That's what it's gonna be doing uh, on these types of moves. You know, I mean, you, you don't look need to look at CVD to understand this. In fact, you actually, it's kind of funny to see it flatlining here. Um, but um, yeah, see, I mean, traded up to the R level here. We just we just marked this up, and I didn't even know where current price was. Um, we're just marking it up here, and here it is, right at this uh, six thirty-seven. That's why we're kind of bouncing here. So what I mean is uh, in an auction here, on these big moves to the downside, and someone else is, there's buyers here, buyers here, buyers here, lots of buying, I mean, huge buying, okay, and they're still in it, right? Now this move to the upside here, it just continues to just float back up until it finds those major sellers. And it doesn't take a whole lot of buying to do that, actually. That's why they're called low-volume pullbacks. There's just not a lot of selling. The sellers have not kind of engaged into it. And that's how you get these grinding moves. All right, well, one, one thing, uh, there is a caveat here to take a look at. And that is like where, at what point, you know, you can even take a look at it here and, and, and look at it like, let's just go back and take a look at it here, okay, and do some analysis on this. Actually, the majority of them, uh, yeah, I would, I would be right in line with uh, what Sviatoslav said, and maybe a little bit higher here, maybe, maybe this, this level here. Um, let's just go with that all the way down here, right? And it went lower too, didn't it? Yeah. This is where all those buyers were on the way down. Okay, so let's now zoom out. They are all in profit here. Now we even give them benefit of a doubt here. It's actually, it's, it's really more the heavy, the heavy selling or heavy buying really started in around here. Okay, a little bit, a little bit lower here. Okay, they're in profit and and they're not shaken out yet. They have not sold yet. They are controlling all of these lots, you know, all these contracts down here. Okay, this is a little different than we talk about. Usually we talk about the aggressors moving and then in control, and, and they certainly are. Okay, but it, it it's, you know, a, a little bit of buying can continue to move this up higher up into these areas here. Uh, and you're just not finding enough sellers. The sellers will have the little kind of little ray of sunshine uh, to be able to move it back down in these areas, stop people out but then it, it really dries up and you'll start to see the buyers trickle in again and move back up and move back higher. It's kind of like a vacuum in, a, in essence. In fact, we can look at the same phenomena here on much, much lower time frames. Even look at the crypto market for something like that. Yeah, I mean, even even like the, the selling move, let's see here. Let me try to find a good example. And this is why we say that these, these markets are fractal and these order flow phenomena on these kind of micro, micro uh, levels uh, and micro structural levels matter or it, in understanding it, you can apply it to these higher time frames. And let's do exactly that. So yeah, looking for sellers to trade into these areas here. Okay, there we go, boom, down lower. Okay, maybe down into 600 and, and, and or you know this liquidity down here. Okay, this is where they kind of took control. 
and it, and, and it floated back up to here. Um, and this would be, our, this is the retest. This is kind of the same thing we're talking about here, exactly. You know, this is where the sellers came in and, and, and then like uh, they stopped selling and buyers come in and, and, and it kind of can move back up here on, on very little volume, okay? So this is a phenomenon here that we're talking about on a much, much smaller scale. Okay, look at the selling, look at the sell dots. Uh, trade down to an area, look at the buyers come in, and then look at the buying in here. Now the buying starts to pick up in here, which looks pretty good. Uh, however, look at the look at the volume bars here. These are delta bars, massive selling. Look at the buying compared to that selling. This is a low volume pullback to where it dropped from. We're looking for the same thing to unfold here. Okay massive selling into in, and getting in, you know getting filled into these limit buy orders all the way down a okay, massive selling even at the close here okay now the the buying here actually does look pretty good um but compare this buying to over here there's still quite a bit more selling right We can look at it at the daily chart here too. Look at look here. Look at the selling here on this daily chart. Look at the buying. Okay, this is like a low volume pullback. Anyway, once you start to understand some of these concepts uh you can apply trading strategies around them and that, that's what that's what these webinars are all about and we're just really covering it on a much much higher time frame here right and here here we go yeah so sellers had their little day in the sun okay moved it down and we're floating right back up and buyers will continue to grind this higher, looking for them to trade into this liquidity now up here. At 640, 645, maybe 650. Okay, just stay in the position. Get in, get into the position and stay in it. And let it let it work here. Right? There, there's trade management is really easy on days like this. Now, I would recommend to take some partial profit along the way here, though, especially now. And the way to do it is like we already marked up these levels here, right? We already know this like uh, 37 level is it was important because that was where a lot of um, market selling took place into limit buy orders. So take some partial profit there. Now manage your stop and let this just run and run the rest of the day here. Anyway, it's it's a strategy here based on higher time frame order flow, and the same phenomena here is dictated. We're looking for exactly this kind of run here, okay? In this example, okay, we would say now we, they didn't really get filled on the on the bid on the way down here at all, right? They just they just dropped it. Um, let's suppose they got filled on the way on, in the bid on the way down. So it would look something like this here. They got filled. They got filled. They got filled. They got filled, they got filled, okay? And we know the overall average position is probably somewhere around here, right? And they're they're already above it. Um, and we're just looking for this to kind of float back up into structure and where the selling initiated. So somewhere around in these areas up here, right? That's what we're looking for. So uh, now along the way, okay? Uh, you can start to look for maybe profit taking, for example, here or like here. Okay, and then just you know one or just just a little bit, and then manage it, manage your stop. So you so you're at, at break even or or uh, or better, uh, and uh, and then let this continue to work for you, okay, until you get up into some of these more uh, important levels here. All right. 
makes sense. Okay, uh, Mark, so you want to look at icebergs uh, and some kind of weird uh, uh, phenomena happening there inversely. Yeah, no problem. We'll take a look. Uh, James, is there a tutorial on this uh, on higher time frames? Uh, um, the, James, like, not really. Um, however, actually, every day, many times over. So this kind of phenomenon right here, on this very small time frame, is what I'm talking about. That it, it, it's fractal. It happens on these higher time frames as well. So you'll see it again and again. All right, guys. So, so where 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 are we right now? We trade. We're looking for that liquidity around uh, uh, 40, 640, 645, maybe 650 to trade. It already did, and we're above it. Okay. So, like I said, these are really really simple trades to manage. But take some par partial profit because you're going to get these really steep pullbacks uh, quickly. But then it's just going to float right back up into these areas again. All right. Okay, so Alan, I hope you're just cleaning up again. Okay, very, very, this is really easy trading. And, the, and it's so, you know, just think about it. Think of all the other people who don't understand the order flow and they're just getting annihilated. They keep saying, well, it's, it, I got to go short. I got to go short, like it's it, the market's down, right? And they don't understand that people were getting, were, were larger players were buying all the way down yesterday. <laughs> yeah, soon you'll be my co-host. Um, I just, I, I want to see you just, uh, I want to see these, I want to see a million dollar check cashed, uh, Alan. That's what I want to see. So uh, James, any, anyway, I know that, that that doesn't really kind of, you know, um, answer your question about higher time frame analysis type stuff. Uh, however, I, this is it. I mean, we go through this all the time. It's the same thing all the time, again and again and again. All right, understanding this this here is just one small example. I mean, we could make another example. I mean, there's just so many of them. Um, uh, in here, you know, one after another. Uh, we can even zoom into like levels like this and start to understand them. You know, looking at seconds or even milliseconds, we can look at these areas in here. It's the same thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Markets are fractal. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, Todd. Yeah, if I give if, if I give you a million dollar check, then you can cash it. No, I want to see it. Like, uh, was it was it um, uh, who's the actor, the comedian, uh, Canadian? Oh God, I can't. Why can't I? I'm blanking on his name. That um, Jim Carrey. There you go. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I believe uh, the story is like uh, maybe you guys can verify it, but. Uh, uh, he, for years, carried around in his wallet a million-dollar check. Oh, it was $10 million. Wow. And he post-dated it, too. Okay, there you go. Well, Alan knows the whole story. Uh, and um, uh, and then uh, he, he just, that was his goal. Uh, and, yeah, he certainly cashed it many times over. So, Alan... Now I'm looking for it from you. All right, so let me see. I'm getting a little bit behind on the questions. Um, hold on a minute. Oh, we got plenty of time here today. Like we're just looking for this to continue to ride.
Oh yeah, stop runs, that's right. Okay, uh, let's take a look here. Um, yeah, all right, or, or not stop runs. I mean, look at people are getting stop out all the way up here. Uh, icebergs on, on the way down, right? So yeah, exactly. So they're getting filled, they're getting filled, they're getting filled uh, in here. Uh, likely, uh, you know, I don't know, um, I'm not sure uh, what to say here. I mean, the, the beauty of these icebergs is this is just fact. Right, we know they're getting filled in here. Maybe they're just getting annihilated. Some of these um, other traders are getting not annihilated in here. I would think that it would be profit taking at these areas here, which would make good sense to me, because they were in, you know, on the way down yesterday, so they're pre taking profit on the way back up. Okay, and these are their icebergs in here, and that's that's what I would say, uh, James, uh, Mark. Now, you know, I, I don't know, I can't link their accounts, um, but uh, they're not positioning here. It's more like profit taking is what it looks like to me. Okay, and again, look at 43.50, this is gonna be a big area here. Now, we didn't we didn't do our analysis on the ES yesterday. It was actually, um, I think it was less bearish than the NQ. If I recall, so yeah. Uh, anyway, that's the way I would look at it here, and and we're following along with them. To be honest, we we were just uh, talking about taking profits in some of these areas, but letting the rest ride. Now you know something more aggressive would it a little bit of a leap of faith, but like. Uh, uh, you'd be looking, I mean, you can look for an, an, an entry in some of these, you know, get back in uh, and then write it again. And, you know, what you'd be looking for here uh, is, well, the structure to start to be tested uh, and, uh, and break. And then also these levels here, pullbacks to these levels here, like this area here would be a great area for a pullback because this is where it broke out from. Okay, we didn't get it. It came down pretty close to it, but we didn't get it, right? Uh, so your limit buy order down here would never get filled. And then they, they already came in and were pretty aggressive underneath here. Uh, and we see the reaction. Okay, so um, yeah, anyway, you know, you'd be looking for, uh, there's just many different ways to look at splicing into this here on micro trends. It's, it's really up to you. Uh, you can look at the order flow this way. Uh, you can look at it um, back up above this area here. Okay, these we cover these things all the time. Okay, so anywhere in here, you could you could be getting in. Uh, if you're really aggressive, and we we, we are sometimes, you you'd be looking for quick move down, lack of uh, selling in here, buyers start to come in, boom, right in here. Now I would get in probably a little bit higher, probably here. And that, that's kind of a little leap of faith here, but you've, you've got a few things on your side. First off, you got some structure. Uh, you got the buyers coming in. You have the lack, the, the exhaustion here. Uh, you have huge orders right underneath it, supporting it and, the, and, you, and you found buyers, right? So they're gonna push it through here. Uh, you've got a lot of reasons for, this, for these buyers to be able to push through and trade up into next areas of liquidity. Uh, and um, uh, yeah, just shy of it, and they, then we know that it. Uh, well, they 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 got filled here, uh, and that now we're looking for the move higher, right? Again, we get a lot of insight from these guys too. It's this this guy here actually he wanted to get filled, and he didn't, and then he chased it, and he got filled here. All right. So again, uh, you know. Look, look for some of these areas here for after you maybe take some profit and you're in, in really good profit because it, it's, you've been following it, moving it on the way up and moving your stops. You can consider getting really aggressive and splicing into these uh, trades uh, in some of these areas. And this is not actually the most aggressive way to splice into it. Uh, you know, the limit, the limit buys in, in some of these areas would be more aggressive uh, in my opinion, but it's up to you. You know, you, you'd be looking at some of these little areas here, and that would have been a perfect limit buy right in here. 
I, I just not comfortable with it. I like to look for more confirmation in the trade and, and get involved in up into these areas here. So anyway, right? And then again, take some profit up here, probably traded to it, to it now, right? Just, just trading into it right now. Yeah, and we don't know how, we know there's a lot of liquidity up here, that's for sure. Okay, we're, we're probably gonna find, oh, interesting. Now they're starting to buy on the icebergs. Okay, they're flipping. Anyway, let's jump back to this NASDAQ and see what's going on here. Uh, Jai, Jai Jai, is that how you say it? Is that how I pronounce it? Yes, okay. Uh, the structure, order flow structure. Yeah, I mean, um, all right, we'll, we'll take a, a bit of a, a breather and, and then, uh, and then continue on. I mean, we've, I mean, basically we got really easy trading here today. Uh, so we can cover lots of different stuff. Um, as we're looking for this to just continue to, to, to go higher. Um, order flow structure is really simple. What's market structure? Uh, the order flow within it is what we want to cover, but um, let's take the volume dots off and the heat map off. Okay, this is just best bid and offer. All right, and we're looking at, now this is a very simple concept to understand uh, in market structure is areas of breakout and then directional move and then, you know, um, consolidation and then breakout and directional move. So you, you can see it in, in many times over in this chart here. Here, breakout, pullback, oops, here, breakout, deep pullback here. And this was actually in the smaller time frame. this is a false breakout. And it came back down and traded into this previous range, but it did not go below it. Okay. So, um, and then you can see even smaller areas, like this is another little sideways consolidation, another one here, another one here, and it broke out. Looking for it to trade back up at least into where it broke from down here, and it, it went above it. You can even see the pullback to where it broke out from and continuation. Okay, now what we want to understand is within these areas of consolidation, we want to look for um, we want to look for the order flow. And let, let's just go with this one right here. And this is what we mean by understanding in that structure here. Now there's multiple structures even within here. It's all fractal, like we were saying. Uh, but uh, within this structure here, it's, it's not a really good structure to, to, to demo, but uh, we're looking for the volume within it, okay? Where's the, where's the volume transacting within that structure? And I don't know if I wanna demo this one here. Yeah, let's let's look for a better one because it because it, it broke the structure and then it came back up into it. So um a little, a little more complex. Yeah, I mean this is kind of an ascending wedge here. Uh we can take a look at that. All right, so here. Structure, breakdown, and then breakout. Okay, now look at the volume within it here in this one. And the volume within it, like, you know, some selling comes in, selling, but buyers. Retests, no, no real uh, insight here at this point. Buyers come in here, this is looking pretty good. And they moved it away quickly. 
Okay, I, I actually right in through here, I'd be maybe looking for this pullback and then a move right back up here like this. Instead, it went back and forth for a while again, and then it broke out. Okay, but usually after a, a, a quick move like this, you get a small retracement and then the move continues to test the top of the range here. Okay, and, and instead it, it didn't, it, it, it actually did it here and it failed, right? And it came back down, retested where it just broke out from many times. And then we start to see buyers curl into it here. And here they come again. Now we're looking for the breakout up to the top of the range, minimum, right? And on, on these kinds of moves, we talk about these, we're looking for this move to unfold and then maybe take a partial profit up here. And instead, you know, you can see this, the volume in here pressure was really great, or, you know, and it was able to move up into the top of this range. And we can even zoom out and you can see how this range here consolidation and then break out again on high buy volume. Okay, so now we're understanding two elements within these areas of consolidation and these breakouts. And this is typical and will repeat again and again and again. This is just how it happens. And this is what's required in order for price to go higher. All right, now we understand volume within the context of the structure. But now we're still not looking at the full picture here. And this is really a problem uh, that, uh, uh, you know, footprint traders, market profile, volume profile traders, candlestick traders, they don't have the full picture. This is where, you know, bookmap lends a very nice edge. What about the auction? Where are they bidding? Where are they asking? We don't know. Right? We don't have that information here. You can get it from the current order book, but that's only the current order book. So what's the context for the historical? Okay, here it is. Now we have it because we have the heat map. Okay, and uh, yeah, they're starting to bid up in these areas here. This is exactly what we look for. They're bidding up in here and they're starting to pull. In. We're finding buyers in here. You know, it, it was kind of a narrow range in here, you know, bidding and offering here, and we still didn't have much insight here. We're starting to look at, okay, here we start to get the insight. Okay, right in here, we, this is exactly what we cover many times over. And this is where the heat map can help you so much. They're pulling here. We're finding buyers here. Well, even before that, they start bidding up in here. They bid up in here as well. Okay, but a little bit more here. Okay, they bid up more here, here. Now, now we're finding buyers. Now they're pulling here. Okay, so we're looking for the move up into this area, maybe this area here, minimum, just minimum. And I can see them coming in here. Okay, so maybe maybe we can move up to there too, okay, this area of liquidity, because that's where the sellers are. They're pulling from here, they're up here instead. There, you know, I would be looking for actually the first one to come up to about here. And they're pulling, right? And we're finding more buyers, great. Still looking for the move, all right? So there you go, there's your context and understanding. That's one uh, example here. And we'll go through, we go through it all the time, uh, Jai Jai. So um, uh, yeah, continue to look for it. All right, guys, so we're getting up into these levels here. Uh, you're welcome, uh, Jai Jai. Um, yeah, yeah, understanding understanding order flow, I mean, you know, once you can start to piece these uh, things together, like, you know, the reads are pretty pretty simple. It's, it's just not complex stuff. All right, let's zoom out here. We're at another level here around this 688. I remember 688 yesterday and we're kind of stalling a little bit. So let's zoom out, let's take a look again, right? We're still looking for it to go higher, right? But this is why we're looking at 688 right here, okay? So yeah, it's actually at these kinds of levels here, I, I certainly like to take my profits, no question about it. Um, now let's just read it though, and you know, do we have any reason for taking those profits besides that that big area up there? 
not yet, really. I mean, uh, uh, they're still like pulling here a little bit. Not finding enough buyers in here. Here we go. All right, so there we're, there's our buyers and we should be able to reach 700. Now, if we don't, and we start to find sellers come in here and hit the bid pretty hard, yeah, you know, that's where you might consider taking some partial profit. They don't give all this back because we're up at some key levels now, right? Where the sellers initiated, they may initiate, reinitiate again, right? Why? Why? Because this is a low volume pullback in this bigger move. Okay, heavier selling over here. So, you know, these are ways to consider your trade management. And here they come, right? So uh, now let's see if they can. Uh, are they going to continue or not? Like, is it going? Is that just a quick move, a stop run, and and uh, and then looking for, uh, uh, you know, float float back up can, and continue up into 700, 707 or seven oh six. Okay, if we get some exhaustion here on that buy side. And more sellers a little bit lower here, then likely we're going to go back down. 685. No, it's just not going to do it. Like we're getting buyers up here instead, right? So yeah, continue to grind higher, 700. And what about our 707 area? Yeah. Okay, there's 700. Okay, now, now actually this is getting really interesting. We might see some really nice, huge stop runs up here. God, it's been a huge stop run the whole way. Ah, poor, poor retail traders, just getting annihilated. And it's, it's it's really sad to see, uh, but you know we know better. I mean we we you know that's why you know we're always looking for an edge. Uh, so we're not those poor retail traders. Yeah, they started buying in here, uh, icebergs. It was actually kind of uh, what uh, Mark was showing as well. We saw some selling on that S&P, some selling in here, and they really started to buy up above um, in here, a little bit of a spike in here, here. so some buying in here. And then just a little bit of everything in here for a while. That was the big move though, in these two little areas in here. So some buying in here and some buying in here on the bid. All right, guys, there's our 707 level. I mean, just some beautiful moves here up into these uh, higher levels of liquidity. Just, just beautiful moves. Yeah, I'm getting a little antsy now. I mean, about this whole move here. Because we're up in these levels here. So now it's time. Now the easy trading's kind of kind of done in my opinion. Now now we need to pay more attention because this is where the order flow events from yesterday initiated. Now we could get back up here too, you know. I mean, so far I'm I'm you know, getting ready here to like pay more attention for sure. Uh, 
so looking for some profit taking, looking for um, some new selling to come in here. Okay, looking for liquidity on the bid in certain areas to start to transact. Instead of this kind of easy grinding floating move here. Okay, now I'm not saying it's over yet. It it might continue, uh, but but being aware, looking for these things to maybe start to unfold. Maybe because we're up at certain levels now. Let's let's take a take a quick look back, okay, and uh, take a look at uh, our our candlestick chart here. Our daily, you know, look at this nice, nice, easy move on the way back up. Uh, you guys probably have your high volume node probably in here somewhere, I imagine. Um, is that about right? You, you guys tell me. 727 or so, 725. How we could take a look at this chart, our 10,000 contract chart yeah we're right up to where it dropped yesterday yeah I mean we can come up into like 717 and, and 730 somewhere around there look at the back and forth in here too you know, it's up it's down it's up it's down it's trying to figure it out here but I mean you get you, these are new sellers you know trying to initiate and thinking they're getting a deal here uh, and they're getting this is what this is them capitulating Yeah, so if it's moving down, Sviatoslav, this is uh, these are um, you know sell icebergs, so they're you know on the bid getting filled. I'm sorry, on the offer getting filled. Most likely, it could be on the bid. But anyway, they're sell that for sure. All right, this is going to be an interesting move. Let's see if we can get enough buyers here. Okay, are, are we going to get new selling coming in here? Okay, new selling coming in here will, will dramatically change things. It'll it'll start moving down on these lower levels of liquidity pretty quickly. But now that floating kind of like looking for it just to grind higher here might start to shift. That's what we're looking for here now or paying attention to. Uh, it looks to continue here. Let's see, back up into 710, or back into Thank <laughs> you. Yep, still, still continuing here. 710 is even pulling. All right, guys. Anyway, I think we covered a lot of nice stuff today. Uh, let's uh, let's wrap it up. We'll call it a day. Uh, and um, yeah, talked a lot about higher time frame stuff and also fractal markets and uh, ways of considering managing these trades, uh, getting involved, letting it run, uh, the supply and the demand on on these higher time frames, and and that we. Um, uh, are combining with the webinar that we saw from yesterday uh, on the way up. Uh, correlated markets as well, 
Uh, also, I'm just curious about these cues. Okay, so here's something to look at here. And now I know Doug is looking at this, um, and uh, you guys should consider it as well. Look at the look at the liquidity up here in the in the cues at five. I'm sorry, three fifty nine. It has not transacted yet, but it's been in the book here for a long time since the cash open. So, you know, look for some, some you know, we're, and we're paying attention to these levels up here, right? In the, in the NASDAQ E-mini, and now we have another confluence here with the correlated markets from the QQQs. Start to look at your Russell. Okay, Russell's starting to sell off some too now, as you can see. Okay, what about the ES? Yeah, ES still looks pretty good here. So maybe just some back and forth now for a bit. I uh, don't have the bonds, uh, Alan. So um, we'll have to uh, remind remind me uh, if you want to look at them. We can look at them t maybe tomorrow uh, before uh, J Trader gets on. Uh, I don't know I, about the bonds correlation. I, I didn't see um, if if it broke or not. I, I don't know. I, I I don't have it up. Yeah, the inverse correlation. All right, guys. Well, uh, yeah. Thanks for coming, and uh, we will uh, catch up with you tomorrow. We have uh, Jay Trader. He comes in a little later, uh, around uh, uh, you know ten fifteen, ten twenty. Okay. We'll see you then. All right. Take care. Bye bye.